Question 17 to 21 in the Asa Blue paper. Question 17. So question 17 is essentially asking us if the beta hydroxy acid is 3 hydroxybutanoic acid, then what alkyl groups do R, R dash, etc. represent? So this question should should make a lot of sense if you understand a little bit about the structural diagram of 3 hydroxybutanoic acid. Um, so we know that 3 hydroxybutanoic acid has a 4 carbon backbone because it has a butanoic acid base. So therefore we can say that um, in our template of the beta hydroxy acid, acid, sorry, we should expect a four carbon backbone along here. So one, two, three, and then either R, da R triple dash or R double dash should be a CH3 group. So therefore we can um, write that down. R, double, R triple dash or R double dash should be a CH3 group. So this immediately rules out a couple of the answers. Um, a a can be ruled out immediately because um, A has R triple dash and R double dash as only hydrogen groups and not as either one or as a uh, CH3 group. Um, B can also be ruled out for the same reasons because in that again R double dash and R triple dash are hydrogen groups and not C uh, CH3 group. Um, so that sort of leaves us with C and D. Um, so we can rule out D because D has listed um, in D we have listed R dash as equaling CH3. So if we have a quick look at our template, if R dash was a CH3, that's essentially a methyl group um, that we're adding on to this backbone. So we'd expect our um, our formula to state that the um, Beta hydroxy acid would be something along the lines of 2 methyl 3 hydroxybutanoic acid, right? Because if this is here, we're adding the methyl group onto the second carbon, so this would read something along the lines of 2 methyl 3 hydroxybutanoic acid, but it doesn't. So we know that's not true, so therefore we can rule out D, and therefore we can confidently say that C is the only correct answer, because um, in C, our single dash is a hydrogen group, um, one of R triple dash and R double dash is a hydrogen group, and um, the other of R double dash slash R triple dash, um, in this case R, R double dash, is a CH3 group. So we've got this four carbon backbone um, involving um, R double dash and the three original carbons, and um, these are the R triple dash and the R single dash are appropriately just hydrogen groups. Um, so that would give us the uh, formula of R uh, of three hydroxybutanoic acid for our beta hydroxy acid if C was correct. Question eighteen. So question eighteen is essentially asking us if the beta hydroxy acid is three hydroxypropanoic acid, then what functional groups do R, R dash, etc. represent? So it's fairly similar to question seventeen in that we're given the um, chemical formula of our beta hydroxy acid and we're asked to convert that and figure out what the values of the R's are. So, um, we since we know this is a propanoic acid, so therefore we can confidently say that the backbone will have three carbons in it. So since we already have enough carbons in our backbone, we can say that our triple dash and our double dash are not going to be methyl groups, and therefore they're going to be hydrogen groups. So since we know um, those two facts, we can rule out a couple of answers. Um, firstly, we can rule out C and D because C and D both have um, either of R double dash and R triple dash as methyl groups. So we know that's incorrect. So therefore we can immediately rule out C and D are both wrong. So that leaves us with A and B. Before we answer uh, or slash figure out which of A and B is correct. It's really important to know the difference between a ester group and a carboxyl group. So a carboxyl group is like so. It is a COOH group if on the right hand side of the compound and or a HOOC group um, if it's on the left hand side of the compound. So these two things mean the same thing. They're both carboxyl groups in chemical formula form. So, let's go back to um, A and B. 
So A and B, um, in A we have R as being a hydrogen functional group, whilst in the answer B we have R as being a methyl functional group. So that's the only difference between those two answers. So how does that affect our um, equation? If we look back to figure one, we will see um, on the left hand side the template for a alpha bromoester. And you'll notice that the R group subs in into this um, little bit over here. So what happens if we start subbing in these um, respective functional groups? Well, what we get for A is we get um, ROOC will become HOOC. So what does this remind us of? Well, it reminds us of a carboxyl group because that's what it is. So what we're essentially making in A is a carboxyl group on the end of this compound. But is that correct? Can we have that? Well, turns out we can't because this is a bromoester, not a carboxylic acid, it is a bromoester. So because of that, um, we can say that A is incorrect because what A will produce is not a, um, uh, a bromoester at the beginning as a um, reactant. What we'll get is a carboxyl, um, carboxylic acid as our reactant. So we can rule out A and by um, process of elimination, B is correct, but um, if you know a little bit about esters, you'll know that if we sub in um, a methyl group as R into this um, template, we will indeed get a ester at the end of it, um, and therefore B is the correct answer. So question 19, question 19 asks us which of the following could be produced by the reaction sequence described in figure one. Um, so let's just go through each of the answers, A, B, C, and D, and just um, eliminate each of them. So A is incorrect because A has a four hydroxy group, <clears throat> um, and that is not allowed because our hydroxy group is always going to be on this third carbon. Um, the only thing we can change about our hydroxy, uh, beta hydroxy acid is what each of these respective um, R groups are. So we can't change whether the um, hydroxy group ends up here or whether this is a carboxylic acid group. This is part of the template. These will always be here. We can only change these R groups. So um, A is incorrect because it implies that the hydroxy group is no longer on this third carbon. B is possible as we have a 3-hydroxy, uh, 3-methyl three three pentanoic acid being formed. Um, it's possible because uh, what, what a possible configuration in terms of the R groups could be uh, for this to work is if R double dash was a methyl group, so that would be a 3-methyl group because they're on the third carbon, and R triple dash, um, or if that was a ethyl group, then what we'd get is a um, three uh, is a sorry five carbon backbone. Um, so the original three in the template plus the extra two in the ethyl group that we've just added on. So that would make it a pentanoic acid. There is a three hydroxy group. There is a three methyl group there. Therefore, it is a three methyl uh, sorry three hydroxy three methyl pentanoic acid is possible. So B is correct. Just for the sake of completion, let's go through C and D. Four hydroxy. Um, well, oh, well, sorry, C is incorrect, as is D, as they both include um, four hydroxy groups, which, as described in A, is not possible. So B is therefore the only correct answer. So for question 20, we are asked to find out the two reactants for the compound 3-hydroxy-4-ethylhexanoic acid as the product. Well, um, for reasons described in the text I've written down, we can shorten our search by a lot by just figuring out what R double dash and R triple dash is. So I've included here the, um, the structural formula of 3-hydroxy-4-ethylhexanoic acid. This is what it looks like. And I've highlighted what the R double dash and the R triple dash groups are. So if we go ahead and sub that into the aldehyde slash ketone template, 
um, it, as described in figure one, what you'll get is when we replace the R double dash as hydrogen and the R triple dash as this B group, what you'll get is you'll get a aldehyde group on the left hand side, just over here. So therefore we can immediately rule out answers B and D because they are not aldehyde groups, um, they are ketone groups, um, whilst A and for A and C, well the answer is pretty clearly A because we our ethyl group here is attaching to the second carbon on that backbone. Um, so therefore um, A is correct and C is wrong because C has that methyl group attaching to this third carbon. And secondly, it's also a methyl and not a ethyl group. So the correct answer is A um, and it is the only possible answer in question 20. So going to question 21, there's a little bit of assumed knowledge that is necessary for answering the question. You have to know what the structural formula of acetone is. It is a ketone with a methyl group on each of these R positions. Um, as for the propyl bromoacetate, I guess you also have to know what that looks like. This is a bromoacetate group just being circled on by my cursor here. And this is a propyl group. So, um, from there, we can figure out what each of our R groups will represent. Um, and we just have to sub them in into the final beta hydroxy acid template to figure out what exactly our final structure looks like. So in this position, we have um, the R dash group, which is a hydrogen. <clears throat> in this position is the R double dash, which is a methyl group. And in this position, um, the R triple dash is also a methyl group. So we have a four carbon backbone, so it's a butanoic acid. Um, and in the third carbon position, we have a hydroxy group attaching to the third carbon and a methyl group attaching to the third carbon. So what we'd expect to see is three methyl, three hydroxy um, butanoic acid as being the correct answer. Um, and that corresponds to answer D for question 21.